And welcome to part who gives a shit of the Pokemon Gold walkthrough where I am joined by a special guest, Code Black. Say hi, buddy. Why? Who the fuck knows? Why, why, why do I have to introduce myself? I People know who I am. And if you don't know, you better go watch Boo the Kai. And the Castlevania Adventure. And Kirby. On his channel. Yeah. Well, I, I, uh, yeah. You know, his channel, my channel, whatever channel you want to do, except I didn't do Castlevania Adventures say? on mine. I'm raising Pokemon 2. Will you battle with me? <laughs> well, obviously, because you don't really have a choice in this game. So we're finishing up the last part of Johto in route number 46. Stat time! James yeah, loves this This part. session's really fucking gay, folks. I'm just kidding. Go ahead. All right, gold, silver version, Geodude, 40% in the morning and during the afternoon. 45% chance at night. Crystal version, 50% chance all across the board. Sparrow in the gold and silver version, 35% chance morning and afternoon. No chance at night. Crystal version, 30% chance morning and afternoon. Again, no chance at night. Rattata, gold, silver version, 20% chance morning and afternoon. No chance at night. Oh, no, 50% chance at night. My bad. Crystal version, 15% chance in the morning, 20 in the afternoon, 50% chance at night. Gold Silver version Jigglypuff, 5% chance all across the board. And Crystal version, 5% chance in the morning only. You're going to get yourself a fan fee and the usual head buns. We only got a few trainers that we are going to be heading up against. The one that we are going against right now with the two Ponitas has a cell phone if you want to have a chance to go against a Rapidash later on within the game. Um, at one point, I do believe that I will be going back and doing a lot of the trainer um Rechallenge battles because I've had so many phone calls off camera of trainers being like, Yeah, oh, my Rattata's like now level 20. Why don't you fight me? Okay, Joey, why the fuck not? I've only got like a whole group of 30 plus, but I'll take on your level 20, Raticate. Why the fuck not? You have a giraffe rig? Yeah, I got a giraffe rig. You good? He is pretty good. He was a bitch to catch, but he's pretty good. Mainly, the main reason why he's pretty good, he's part normal and part psychic. Psychic's only weak to dark and ghost, but because he's part normal, ghost still can't hit him. So he is only weak to dark. And because fighting is strong against normal, but is weak to um, psychic, it's just normal damage. So only dark can hurt Girafferig. Oh. Girafferig's a really good, really good get. He does learn a lot of good moves. Right now, what I have the him. Fuck thirteen. What is yeah, this? Yeah, I don't even know. Something confuses me within route number 46 because of the fact that we were going against level 17, 16, 16, and 5 level 13s. And I think it's because this is the route that when you start off the game, you can go up through um, the border pass in order to catch an early Geodude. Yeah. But these guys are blocked off through hills that you can only get by going downward from... from Blackthorn. Uh, yeah, from Blackthorn. So why is it that these guys are so weak level that doesn't make any sense? Like what is this like? A, is this like a? Is this the game giving you a chance to level up? Like guys, you have in the box, they're like level ten. What the fuck? It is very, it? it very well could be. I there mean, really is no other reason why that it would be that way. It, it really, there really is. Change in the other generation. Or um, is it the same. Exactly the same in the same? The exact what? same in Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Seventeen. So the fact that uh, Aaron has an Oddish. has an Oddish instead of two Ponitos, which is level only level fourteen. So again, what's the fucking point? That is one of the dumbest things I've ever seen so far in Pokemon history, really, honestly. Yeah, it is. I mean, unless there's a way to access it that you just don't know about, but I mean, what the fuck else? There really isn't, you know. Well, actually, no, there is one way. I just thought of it. The Dark, the, uh, the dark Cave. If you go out of your way and get um, Rock right. Break early, you can go through the Dark Cave. You have to learn Surf, so after you beat Morty... You can learn Surf and Surf across through Dark Cave, break the rocks that you need to break, and you're able to only get to that part of it. Because you can't get to Blackthorn because that's blocked off by ridges, but you can go downward to there, so that could be why. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Kanto, route number 27. Um, we're obviously just surfing on our way over there, but let's go ahead and go what you go over what you can catch around there. All right, while you are surfing, you have a 90% chance all three games to get a Tentacool, 10% chance to get a Tentacruel. If you're going out of your way to fish, Old Rod, 85% chances of Magikarp, 15% chances of Tentacool. Good Rod, 35% chances to te it's a Tentacool, 35% chances of Magikarp, 20% chance it's a Chinchow, the electric water type, which I think is pretty badass, and 10% chance to get yourself a Shelter, probably one of my favorite growing into ice types. 
And then finally, Super Rod. 40% chance it's a Chin Chow, 30% chance it's a Shelder, 20% chance it's a Tentacruel, 10% chance it's a Lantern. What do you feel about Electric Water type? Do you think that's any good? It's the only type that is that way. Well, I mean, uh, what, what would it be weak against? It'd be weak against, well, wouldn't it's it still be the ground or? Um, no, no. It'd well, be 0.5 effective? Well, no, ground would still be double effective because it's electric. Um, but it's not purely, though. That's even problem, even though. even so, it still hurts it double. So, like, basically the way it goes, like, say you use, like, Geodude. It's a rock ground type. Yeah. If you use water, it's times four, four effective. effective. Kind of like Gyarados when he gets hit with thunder, it's times four times effective. Times four effective, exactly. So, him being water and electric, he'd still be weak to electric because electric still doesn't weak to lower. Grass, right? He'd still be weak to grass. He'd be uh, weak to ground. Ground, electric, grass. I think That's that might be of. it. That's not bad, really. And we get our first trainer in Kanto! This is where, ladies and gentlemen, we start getting. Some, as I'm going to show James ahead of time, some of the varieties of what you could face, finally. Okay, right now we are going against one that has a Bulbasaur, Ivasaur, and Venusaur, all level 32. Now with Typhlosion, it's like, pff, fuck you, I'm going to beat the shit out of you. But let's be honest, that's still pretty impressive going into it. You know, the biggest question I've always had, and just like... Just in general, I mean, maybe maybe somebody in your comment section, if they really feel like they know the answer, by all means, shut me up, but why in the hell would you keep a Bulbasaur to level 32? They learn their moves faster, yes, I understand that, but the huge drawback is the stat gains won't the be the same. The stat gains aren't going to be the same because when because like if you evolve at the earliest level and get that stat boost, then it keeps going on top yeah. of that. But if you're only getting tiny stat boosts to like level 32 and then evolving, you're missing out at at least 30 to 60 stats. Yeah, which I don't by get, doing that. And, and, I mean, I understand that maybe you want to have like Solar Beam at 40, but it's just it just Christ, it's not a huge, it's not a good enough of a payoff. Because even if you are, if you do get Solar Beam, the problem is, is that how strong is it really going to be? Because mm -hmm. your special attack may not be that high. Yep. So unless you're getting the stab off of it, then. Which There's really would, no but, point. Yeah. You talk to this lady in this area, she will give you TM37, which is Sandstorm, which I laughingly see that she says is for, what, what does she put it? Expert trainers only. Sandstorm, that's a joke. What? Yeah, exactly. All it is is just, I'm going to use it if I'm ground type or rock type. It doesn't hurt me, but it hurts you like one HP at the end of every turn for five turns. Yeah, big fucking, big fucking whoop. Why don't she give you a cool move like Baton pass? I don't know, but in order to get that move, you have to have extreme, extreme happiness for your Pokemon in the very starting slot. Anyways, going over the rest of the stats here, silver version only, you get yourself an Arbok, 30% chance all across the board. Uh, crystal version, Arbok in the morning and afternoon, 30% chance, no chance at night. Crystal version only, Sand Slash, 5% chance all across the board. Gold silver version, Aponita, 5% chance all across the board. Crystal version, 5% chance morning and afternoon, no chance at night. Doduo, gold and silver version, 50% chance morning and afternoon. Crystal version, 40% chance morning and afternoon. No chance on night on either of those. Raticate in the gold version, 30% chance in the morning, 40% chance in the afternoon and at night. And silver version, 10% in the afternoon and night. No chance in the morning. Crystal version, 20% chance all across the board. Quagsire, gold and silver version, 10% chance in the morning only. Uh, gold version, 50% chance at night. Higher level, 55% chance at night. That's confusing. Crystal version, 40% chance at night only. Dodrio, silver version only and crystal. 5% chance morning and afternoon. No chance at night. And finally, Noctowl, crystal version, 40% chance, chance at night only. Before he gets rolling on, I just want to give a quick correction to him. Uh, he said that the Sand Slash is 30% across the board on crystal, but it is, in fact, only in gold. Uh, just so that's quickly covered up, you said it was crystal. Oh, I meant gold. Yeah, five percent chance anyway, all across the board. Uh, so it, that's five, five across. Not five percent. Five percent. Five percent across the board on gold, which is good because I fucking love Sand Slash. Sand Slash is a pretty good. He's a grant. He's a pure ground, so he doesn't get hit like Geodude or any of the other rock ground types that get hit with double effectiveness from water. Slash is a pretty damn good move because he has a really high attack, a pretty damn good defense. And Slash being seventy percent chance critical, you're gonna hit it almost every single time. Earthquake is like the greatest, not only ground move, but probably one of the greatest moves ever unless you're going against a flying type in which you're kind of fucked. Huge, huge plus though for uh, Sand Slash is that not only does he get Earthquake, but it's also a stab move on top of it. 
So he gets that point Same with Quagsire. Quagsire right now has Earthquake, and he has Water Ground type. So he gets the stab. He too. gets the stab, and is resistant to electric, which is always a plus. Uh, you know, a really cool thing that I really like about Slash is that there's one Pokemon I've always liked to have Slash on, and that's Persian, because Persian is normal. <laughs> so not only does he get the stab on top of the 60% critical, 70%. but it's, it's a stab. Mm -hmm. Stabs are so underrated. I feel like people, if you... Like, I've started to use stabs finally, because I didn't really know at first like what, what stab did the, the for fact me. The fact that it did 1.5 damage extra, instead. Just, not extra, just, well, it's 0.5 extra. The attack, normal attacks would just be like, you know, one, like, it's damage. One point, yeah. This one's 1. 1.5 the damage. Which is so cool, because, I mean, like, I had a meow. And I found out that tentacles were really weak in physical defense, mm -hmm. and Payday's a physical move, and I would just beat the shit out of tentacles with Payday. And Payday I thought was a weak move, but then I realized that Meowth gets a stab on it. Pretty much. Which makes it a good move. And so just imagine how strong stab moves are when you're going against something that's times four weak against it. Yeah. like It's like, it's like a one-hit KO every single time, no matter what. Yeah, because you can't, I mean, you can't time something by four and then add a plus... 1.5 on top of it. I mean, that's so mm, yeah. overwhelming. So, Last thing to note about the trainers we're going against, we're going to be going against a Bird Keeper, Jose, with a Farfetch. You get his number. And then Arena with a star with two Starmies and a Nido Queen. You can, Those are the two that you can get their numbers on. But again, going into Kanto was like, for a lot of people, not so much me, but for a lot of people, extreme nostalgia. What? What's with your phone? There's your phone. Okay. It's extreme nostalgia for a lot of people that got into Generation 1. Like I said, Generation 2, I've mentioned many times on my channel, but Generation 2 is the one that got me into Pokemon. Not, you know, I'd play Generation 1, but I never fully beat it when I was a kid until much later. But um, for a lot of people, Kanto, very, um, very nostalgic to go back there. And especially with all the different varieties that you'd end up going against. Again, you're going against a Bulbasaur, an Ivasaur, a Venusaur, a level 32. Then you go against a guy that has a, a Magneton, a Quagsire, and an Execute, 33 and two level 31s. Then a Farfetch, Farfetch is kind of eh. But then you got Sandslash level 35, going against a guy with a Starmie and a Execute, um, Execute, and, or is it Execute? Ex I'm just gonna call it Execute. A, a giraffe rig. There's only two star me's and a Nido Queen. Now you're getting hit with nostalgia, but you're getting hit with the sense that you're actually going into a place that matters. Because up until then, you'd be usually going against trainers that would only use like one type. You know, now we're starting to go against trainers that, you know, like with the psychic guy that we're going against right now. You know, obviously he's going to mainly use psychic types, but he's also going to span his Verizons. A water psychic, a grass psychic, a normal psychic. You know, I'm not just going against an, two Abras and a Kadabra like you would in Johto, okay? When you hit Kanto, they start mixing it up a little bit to not only give you the sense of nostalgia, but a sense of you're actually fighting someone that's worth to fight against. Yeah, which is rare because, I mean, like you said, in Johto, like, when they when they send somebody at you who's, like, a stat-specific guy, that's literally all he's got. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, sometimes you're lucky, but, like, the bug catcher might have... You can go ahead and all, touch on this really quick if you want. He might, he might just have all bugs. And maybe if he's lucky, have Butterfree. But and that's it. the only guy exactly. that has a different move type. Thing. Exactly, you know, they don't really span their horizon a bit. And it's understandable. It's only the first half of the game, which again is what makes Generation 2 so good. There are two halves of the game. You go against eight trainers, the Elite Four, and then all of a sudden it's like, hey, here's another eight gym leaders to go against. And then another upgraded version of the Elite Four. Not in Gen 2. That's not until Gen 4 when they upgrade the Elite Four again. The Elite Four, you go against the exact same Pokemon in Gen 2. I didn't know that. Well, mostly because I think I've been playing so much. Uh, Hard Gold, Soul yeah, yeah, Silver. Yeah. That game, that that was one of the greatest things they could have done. I hope, I hope when XY comes out, they decide to re-release Gens 1 and 2, even 3 for XY. I'd love to see how Generation 1 Generation 2 would fare in a 3D playing field. You know, that'd just be awesome. Uh, which I'm still waiting on XY to see how it turns out. You know, I'm not too... I, I gotta show you all the Pokemon that they revealed because they revealed some new ones that you're just going to shake your head on. Some of them look like even carbon copies from older Pokemon games. Like, literally carbon copies with one small difference. It's not a huge thing. But like I said, kind of like with, you know, Cool Tree Arena here. His Starmie. She's going to throw out another Starmie. Okay, so I'm going against a third Starmie. Also, it's like Nidoqueen. Fucking Nidoqueen just out of nowhere. 
you know, and like I said, because it's the first half, you know, in Johto, you know, it, it, it makes sense because it's like, you know, you're just getting into the game. You got to get used to going to the same, same, you know, the same types and whatnot. Now that you're about ready to hit the Elite Four, we're going to go get some really tough opponents. It's like, guess what? Now you're going to be seeing what's like to face people that use varieties. And then even afterwards, when you go back, you know, to go against the Kanto gym leaders. So the gym leaders have more varieties, but even the trainers getting to them have more varieties. One of your favorite team members, even mine. Mm -hmm. Good call on the Lapras. Mm -hmm. I love Lapras. My full, you know, uh, I don't know how much go back, but, you know, following it, it's been going extremely long. I'm on part like 30 something right yeah, now with awesome. it. I'm only like halfway through. I got Typhlosion, awesome. Lapras, awesome. Quagsire, awesome. um, Giraffe Rig. Verdict's out on that, but I don't. I, I, I you'll, you'll, you'll see it due time. Again, these are more. I want to catch these ones because they were different. Um, Pidgeot. Which awesome. I can never go wrong with, and then the six one for whatever reason. Oh, and um, Ampharos. Who the fuck doesn't like Ampharos? The electric type, the one that goes from a Mareep to a oh. Flaffy. Yeah, it's over, but I still talk sometimes. Oh. Okay. So, anyways, when I see you people next time, we will be finally finishing up, getting our way to the Elite Four, and then finally shit's gonna go down. Yo, keep it real. <laughs>